welcome to our Creative Storytelling Workshop, an LA County Library virtual event in partnership with the LA County Museum of Art. I'm Erica, a librarian at LA County Library, and I'll be your host today. Uh, this program is also held in partnership with the LA County Department of Mental Health. Following, following the program, you will receive an email from us with a link to a survey about your experience here today. We'd greatly appreciate it if you could take the time to complete the, that survey for us. Before we begin, we wanted to make a quick introduction to one of our resources for parents and excuse me, caregivers with one of our positive parenting librarians. So here is Jenny. Hello. Before we get started, let me introduce myself and tell you a little bit about how LA County Library can support your parenting needs. My name is Jenny, and I am a positive parenting librarian with LA County Library. I have been accredited by research-based positive parenting programs to provide tips and resources to help you with your child's behavior. These tips include topics that, such as cleaning up, traveling, traveling in the car, and chores. I'll be available during the program to answer questions in the chat, as well as for 10 minutes after the program. You can also schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation with a positive parenting librarian. I have posted the link for scheduling a consultation with us in the chat. You will also be able to find this link in the email that will go out after the program. Thank you and enjoy Creative Storytelling with Ragma. Thank you so much, Jenny, for that great information uh, for parents and caregivers. Continuing with today's program, exploring the theme of technology, librarian Daniel will be reading the book Love Z um, for us, followed by an art activity led by LACMA teaching artist Larry and moderated by Susie. There are some materials for the art. art for the art activity today that will be post that was posted in the registration, but we're going to put it in the chat right now, just in case if you need to have those around, please make sure you get them ready um, so you can follow along. So without further ado, let's get started with Daniel and his book reading. Hi everyone. Um, I'm so excited to read this book. This book is amazing. Um, thank you to Simon and Schuster for allowing us to read this and it is love to see you by Jesse Seema. On a bright and chilly day, Z went out looking for an adventure and stumbled upon a piece of half buried treasure. Inside was a message too smudgy to read, except for two words at the very bottom, love Beatrice. The young robot did not know what love meant or who Beatrice was, but they felt important. So Z tucked the treasure away and headed toward home. As night fell, all the robots prepared to power down and recharge for the next day. Z asked for a bedtime story and a nightlight and a good night kiss. Tucked snugly in bed, Z's thoughts drifted back to the important treasure. What is love? asked the young robot. Does not compute, replied the old rusty robots. And they said, sweet dreams, and turned out the lights. Alone in the dark, Z could not sleep. The other robots had always been able to answer Z's questions. If they did not know what love meant, who would? Maybe there was one person. In the morning, Z went out looking for Beatrice. Hello, I am looking for Beatrice, explained Z. I want to know what love is, and she will have the answer. That sounds important, said the captain. Climb aboard, and we'll go on a quest. So they did. Unsure of how to start a quest, Z asked around, excuse me, are you Beatrice? Are you Beatrice? Hello, are you Beatrice? No, said a voice, what's a Beatrice? We are on a quest to find out what love is, explained Z, and Beatrice will have the answer. I don't know any Beatrice, said the crow, but to me, 
Love is sharing your food, even when it's delicious. That did not compute, but Z thanked the crow anyway and changed course toward a place with delicious food. The baker did not know Beatrice either, but she was happy to share what love meant to her. Love is when someone is patient and takes the time to teach you new things. That did not compute, but Z thanked the baker anyway and changed course toward a place with teachers. The kids at recess had a lot of thoughts about what love meant. Love is butterflies, love is sweaters, love is wishing on a star, love is lawn gnomes, love is a million puppies, love is snowflakes on my tongue. Absolutely none of them computed, but Z thanked the students anyway and had no idea what to go in search of. What if they never found Beatrice? What if love was something a robot just could not compute? Z was about to suggest that they change course toward home when they stumbled upon a good place to spend the night. Hello, we're on a quest. Oh, never mind. Hello. I am Beatrice, said the woman. Z could not believe their luck. What are you doing out there in the cold? Asked Beatrice. Looking for you, explained Z. I want to know what love is, and I thought you would have the answer. Beatrice paused to think. She thought and thought and thought some more. Love is difficult to explain. It's warm and cozy and safe, and you'll know it when you feel it. Z hoped she was right. It's getting late, said Beatrice. Let's get some rest. The young robot was preparing to power down and recharge for the next day when the old rusty robots arrived unannounced. Z, you were gone. We were worried. But we found you. We brought your favorite bedtime story and your nightlight and a good night kiss. It was a feeling the young robot had felt many times before. Tucked snugly in bed, he felt warm and cozy and safe. But now it had a name. Love of Z. Okay, there's the book and back to you, Erica. Thank you so much, Daniel. We really enjoyed that story. Um, so now we'll switch gears to our art workshop. So I'll hand it over to our friends at LACMA. Susie and Larry, you're up. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Excellent, but let me know if it's too loud or too quiet. Anyway, I'm Larry and Susie's here with me and we are going to do a very fun, hopefully it'll be really fun, fun, fun workshop with all of you. And I know there's some parents and some kids. I can't see you. You can see me. So I'm going to guess that the age group is all over the place today, but um, <clears throat> hopefully it'll be really interesting for everybody because we're going to deal mostly with textures. You know, today's theme is technology. So we are going to incorporate technology a little bit with by using um, if you have a smartphone available to you. In a few minutes, I'm going to have you take some pictures of textures around your place just to sort of think about how we can do that tech, you know, make art with technology by even doing that, by taking pictures and manipulating that stuff. So um, I got a sample of something that I did for this workshop right behind me. I'll show you more closely in a minute. But basically, as I say, this is going to deal with texture. Everyone knows what texture is, right? It's what you can feel or what it looks like if you did feel it, it would have bumps and grooves and soft or hard, you know, that's texture. So we're going to definitely focus on texture. And I want to get started with a little slideshow that Susie's going to help me with because that will kind of, um, it's always great for me at least. I love, it's called object-based learning. I love looking at art, the object, and then getting inspired by it and then going and doing some art myself. 
So basically, this is a great list of materials. You don't have to have all of this. You could have different things. Like I looked at this materials list and I created my own. You know, I have um, mostly this stuff, but I also have some a few different things. Like I have bubble wrap that's that I use to make texture when I made my sample. But anyway, as you can see, corrugated cardboard would be great. And if you've got a piece that's big enough, you can maybe use that as your background to, to you know work on because it's more sturdy, it's more thick than a regular piece of paper. But you know, if you don't, don't worry about it. But you know, you can also do cool things with the texture. And you know, also liquid glue, just regular white. Kids glue would be really great. If you don't have that, maybe you could use a glue stick. But I think for this project, because we're using heavier materials, the white glue is better. There's thread or yarn, or I've got some cool braided thread that I found a friend of mine gave a few years ago. And then if you want to use paint, um, you know, on this materials list, it says acrylic paint and paintbrush optional. I actually am going to use poster paint or tempera paint, as it's usually called. And so I'm going to be painting a little bit with that. It's a little bit mess less messy to clean up at the end. And then um, a smartphone. If you have a smartphone or access to one, it would be really great if you could grab that in a few minutes because I am going to be asking you to look around your a place for some textures wherever you are in your immediate environment. So um, to get started with what the art we're going to talk about today, let, um, Susie, switch to the next one. So this is it, art and technology, textural compositions. So textural, what we were talking about, doesn't that, this is a, a photograph, black and white photograph, but doesn't it look like it has a lot of very rich textures? Pretty cool, right? So this is a photograph, black and white photograph by an artist named Aaron Siskine, and he was a New York artist. And most of his wet, most well-known work was done in the 40s and 1950s. So, you know, this art is about 70 years old, but it's really amazing because I'll tell you just a little bit about him as an artist. It's interesting. I read just the other day when he was in his 20s, he was a high school English teacher at a public school in New York City. And he somehow got interested in photography and kind of decided to move away from teaching. And he started doing documentary photography, which this is not a very good example of. This is his later work. And what he's more well known for. But at the beginning, when he first got this kind of camera bug and really loved taking photos, um, you know, a documentary photograph photographer takes pictures of, you know, places and people and things and maybe events and and you know, kind of rallies or political events, things like that. And they document it using photography. It could be color or black and white. But then again, this is the evolution of how an artist or anyone, you know, but art, his art journey took him from there he started to get kind of restless with doing documentary photography so he became kind of friendly with some painters at the time in new york and this was a time when abstract art was really hitting the scene abstract expressionism so abstract may be a new word for some of you it's a fancy word but all it really means is that it's not realistic like when you look at this black and white photo I look at it and I'm like, I love it because I love abstract art. I just love the shapes and the textures and the dark, you know, the dark darks and the medium grays and all that stuff. But it doesn't really, you know, um, the, it, you can write in the chat box if you think this looks like something, if you can want to guess what, um, you know, what Aaron Siskine was actually photographing, but it's pretty abstract. I'm thinking it was, um, well, maybe you guys are writing in the chat. Is anyone? written in the chat yet what they think that's a photograph of doesn't really matter because it's abstract but if you just want to kind of guess what the subject was here someone says maybe rocks rocks that's what i kind of think it looks like maybe a sea like a big rock and near the ocean for some reason it looks like it once had water or maybe that is some water it's really you know it is abstract Asphalt, I see, fossils, mud. So these are all great. And what's really great is you could all be right or you could be wrong, but there is no right or wrong because basically that's what I really want everyone to understand before we even start making our art. There's no right or wrong way to do this. You might feel overwhelmed by how long the materials list is. If you've got a pencil and a piece of paper, you can do some stuff with texture. And if you don't have a phone, you don't take pictures, but you can still look around and find things in your place that show texture. So don't worry about, you know, not, not 
having enough stuff. I bought a lot of stuff because I'm an artist. But um, anyway, this um, this photograph is really cool and it inspired me. So when you look at this, we'll move on to the next slide. Very quickly, volume one. Someone says it looks like a waterfall with no water. A waterfall with no water. That's great. Very interesting. So um, yeah, now we're on to the next slide, and basically this will show you a little bit more what we're doing. I mean, we are going to take photographs. So you know, if you've got a phone, be thinking about where your your house or your apartment or wherever you are right now, what you could photograph that would have show some texture. And then in terms of technology, I like to manipulate photos. I'll take a photo and then I'll put weird filters that are all on my phone. I just go to you know the the options and I can do I can make it black and white even though it started out in color. All sorts of things, you know, do the contrast higher or lower. So there's so many fun things you can do with making art now with your with your phone, with your cell phone. So it's pretty cool. But we are going to be making a hard copy piece of art, you know, like art with with art materials and done. And um, at the top it says composition, the artistic arrangement of the parts of a picture or image. So that's how whenever you make a piece of visual art. The composition is how you arrange the shapes on the page or the canvas or whatever you're doing. You know, the composition has to do like the see the blue and turquoise one. See a lot of um, kind of strong horizontal elements. And you see the horizontal things, the things that run side to side. And you know, it looks like maybe a paintbrush was actually glued on to it or a couple of them. But you can see there's some string, some some uh, maybe corrugated cardboard that's been torn through part of the way, those vertical lines down at the bottom left corner. There's some kind of mesh up in the upper left corner. Those, all those comp compositional elements, I'm telling you, upper left, lower left, to the right, you know, that way, those are where composition has to do with, with how things are, where they are. And then at the bottom, texture. So this is a photograph I kind of see wood and and rusted metal like uh, some kind of like a rusted um hardware but then it also looks like the artist added their own colors yeah there's some beautiful rusty orange and golds it's kind of autumn fall type colors but uh, can you see kind of the wood grain behind it so it looks like it was actually worked on on a piece of wood so be thinking about that and as i say if you have a piece of corrugated cardboard or something you know even the side of a cereal box where it's a little bit thicker because maybe we're going to be gluing things i don't know what you glue it could be a little heavy so you don't want just a lightweight piece of paper if you can help it you know even a grocery a brown paper grocery bag that's a little bit more um, you know it's a little bit stiffer than a regular piece of paper so let's move to the next slide and i will share with you some slides some some photographs that i took so these are textures from around my place. And if anyone wants to write in the chat box, left, middle, or right, you can call it LMR if you want for short, what you think it is. You know, what did I photograph? And of course, these were color photographs. And I actually took a picture of things from farther away and then, you know, kind of took other pictures closer up where so it would become on purpose, become more abstract. So in other words, the original picture, it's very easy to see what I was photographing, what I took a picture of, but then I cropped in on it, I made them black and white, I, I made that, you know, the lights lighter and the darks darker to kind of make it a little bit more abstract. But if anyone, I already see someone said pine cone, bark, mesh bag, left looks like wood. So these are all really great. Anyone want? Oh, yes. I was just going to say it. You read my mind. Might be a palm tree. The one on the right is the trunk of a palm tree. And you know, when they hack the fawns off, sometimes you get those cut marks. But I think that's such a beautiful, you know, so much texture is in there. And the pine cone or pineapple, that's actually. Um, Susie, do you have the color photos? Access to those two or just those three? Yeah, this will show you a little bit. On the left, I just have a piece of, you know, like a, a, a muslin, um, what is it called? The bags are made out of it. They put beans in. So that's just a canvas thinking muslin bag. And the texture is really, when you get really close up, you see that grid, you know, those vertical lines meshed with the horizontal lines. And then the middle one is, oh, let's do the one on the side. So that you can see, those are the palm trees in my backyard. And you can plainly see where you could look right in the middle of that color photo, that's kind of what I zoomed in on, where those kind of cut marks are. And 
it just has such beautiful textures. And then the one in the middle, see that was, I don't know if you can tell, it does look like a pine cone. I don't know what you call it. Is it some kind of a flower? It's in the inside of a short palm tree. You know, when I was standing up, I, I looked into the middle of this short palm tree that's out in the backyard, and I never even saw that it was there. It was like this hidden gem, like a pearl in an oyster shell. But it's some kind of a pod or a flower that it does look like a pine cone, doesn't it? So, you know, you can see that was the source material that I took pictures of. But then I like to play around with the filters and, you know, sometimes make it black and white, stuff like that. So that's the technology part of what we're going to talk about today. You can fool around with that all you want later. But, um, but I'm going to have you look just in a minute. I'm going to have you look around it and take some pictures of some textures. But I think we have one more slide, which is the art that I did as a sound. Oh, no, we have two more. Yeah. So this is, a, you know, showing can you find some cool textures? See, that's obviously on the left um, uh, a ceramic pot, and there's some kind of succulents or cacti that are in it, and that all is good texture stuff. You can see the, the ceramic pot that it's in, it's, it's not just flat, it's raised and scored in, so that's got texture. And then the basket, it looks like some kind of um, side of, a, of some kind of a woven basket. You see those really thick pieces of straw or whatever that was used to make that. And that, you know, looks like braids. I actually have some yarn thread stuff that I have that's braided kind of like that. I was trying to pull it apart this morning. So that, those are really great examples of textures, textures around your house. So then the next slide is just, you know, from me looking at those and taking photographs on my, you know, of things mostly in my backyard, I came back in and I just started playing around with the materials from that material list. And I created this piece of abstract, textural art and it's pretty clear to see what i used i mean you know i used the corrugated cardboard see how i kind of ripped it through in the middle so you can see those beautiful you know the vertical lines up in the upper right corner and then the i'll show you in a minute when um, the, when the camera goes back on my hands but this is um you know there's those round the things that are polka dot in the middle you see the orange oranges red background with the blue polka dots anyone want to guess what i used to print the blue polka dots. Feel free to chime in on the chat and I'll tell you in a second. Or on the right, on the, on the mid, midway down on the far right edge, the blue and purplish thing. What did I use for that? Skeleton wood, pine cones. Tape. Screws. No, that's interesting you said screws because it does, especially that black and white, the one that has the white edge around it. I drew that white line. It looks like a nut or a bolt, you know, when you're doing construction, but it's actually the white line around it. It's kind of jaggedy. I just did it with a white colored pencil on top of black paint. And then the middle, well, actually all those dots, all the little round dots you see, even the ones that are light that are glued on top of the orange, that's from bubble wrap. Someone said it, bubble wrap. Those, so those polka dots, and that's really cool. When you zoom in and look really close, the dots make these really, Cool, even patterns within each dot has a cool texture to it. So, you know, be thinking about that. That's the braided thread I was talking about. See, that that's one of the last things I did, that big S-shaped thing that runs through the middle. And I just, you know, when I glued that down, I just set it down with the way I wanted it. And then I kept putting a little bit of glue underneath and pressing it down, a little more glue, pressing it down. So the whole thing is actually pretty secure now. I'll show you when we go to the other camera. But anyway, that's my final art sample to inspire you, hopefully, the way I was inspired by Aaron Siskind to look at his black and white photograph. So we're going to spend about maybe three or four minutes looking. Um, you can gather up some things for texture to make in your art, but definitely the main thing for this little short period of time, walk around your place and try to find some things that show texture and take some pictures of it, because that probably will get your creative juices going. Definitely helped me to take those photographs before I started working on this art. It just got my, my got me in the flow. So, um, yeah, I think that's the end of the slideshow. So everyone can go look around and do you know look look for their things. And remember, you're taking photos. And if you have to get any more last minute art supplies that you maybe thought of while I was talking, grab those. I'm gonna move my camera so that we can see a different viewpoint here from my hands. And if you don't have a phone, you can always just look at things and commit them to memory. Okay, good. Now, see, I've changed my camera to my hands. 
So I'm, I'm, you know, I know most of you are probably running around doing stuff, but I'll just show you. Um, you know, we were talking about um, using your 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 digital um, camera as a as an art tool making thing. I'm, I was um, a couple of years ago. I realized if you have um, uh, Google Photos, if your photos are transferable, or if you have Google Photos on your phone on your device, there's a thing called animation where you can actually. I'll show you. This isn't really related directly to what we're doing today, but um, you know, the assignment we're doing today, but it does have to do with making art with using your phone. So that's technology and that's today's theme. So I wanted to show you what you can do. So this was a friend of mine that was making a collage, which is cutting and gluing. And I just took photos while she was tearing and cutting and gluing. You know, I kept the camera pretty much in the same place. I took maybe eight photos, seven or eight photos of while she was working. And then I just stacked those photos into this file called animation. You can find that, you know, in, on Google Photos if you have it. It's not on my regular camera roll. Kind of hard to explain, but if you can get to animation, that's just it's such a simple thing. You know, you just take a bunch of pictures, don't move the camera very much when something's in process, and then it animates. Look, this one's simple. It's only two pictures it's from a student that was doing something at, at the holiday in December. So all I did is took two pictures, one when it was almost finished, and then another when it was. And you can see they added the holiday tree and the flashing eyes. That was to end their art, but now it looks animated because I stacked the two pictures together in that animation. And so I do this kooky character called Mr. Percy. And I had my friend photograph me doing, you know, just kind of walking around taking steps. So, you know, this isn't using the video camera. This is just taking still pictures and stacking them together in animation. You might want to play around with that. But, you know, as I say, I also do tons of um, playing around with making, you know, taking like textural pictures like we're talking about today. Here's one of my face doing different expressions. My friend just took pictures without moving the camera. And see how it does that? So that's kind of fun technology you can do with your, with your cell phone. So hopefully you can all see, it's hard for me to get enough light in here on my camera on my laptop, but this is my little art supply studio here. And it's got pretty much everything that we were talking about on the materials list. And, you know, I've got glue, I've got, this is, you know, tempera poster paint, you know, it comes in these jars like this. This is really easy to clean up. And what I did is I just used some, these are great TV trays, you know, frozen dinner trays, put some black and some white paint in there. I've got some green and blue on the other yellow and brown and another. So I'll probably use those. I might do the paint stuff at the beginning, just so we have, we have a little bit of time to let it dry so I can incorporate it into my art without making a mess. So obviously if I've got a bunch of wet paint on my art, I can't really glue anything on top of it. But you know, I'm just starting with this, just a real simple piece. You know, this is just a cut piece of a big box. And on that one that I show, I'll show you. The one that I made that I showed you on the slideshow, you know, that's just, um, you can see the corrugated cardboard up in this corner. And can you see I added white? I took an oil, a white oil pastel and tore the paper off. So it was just the cylinder, the, you know, the shape of the oil pastel. I turned it on its side and I ran it back and forth. I'll show you that because that's kind of a fun thing to do. So I'm going to take a piece of, well, here's, I'm going to actually use this one and maybe I'll even sort of tear the corner off of here. This particular cardboard was glued really good inside, so it's hard to get the corrugated part. It's not Someone really asked, good. is it okay that I do not have paints and only oil pastels? That, that's fine. That's totally fine. Probably most of you don't. You, are, you know, I doubt if all of you have paint out right now. So don't worry about not using paint. You can do definitely, I'll show you some oil pastel stuff in just a second. So see that? Just by tearing that. And hopefully you've got some of this kind of cardboard. It's pretty easy to find if you can find a box you don't care about. I'm going to take off a little bit more of this. But you know, here's something for those of you that were worried that you don't have this and you don't have that. Look, I did that, that um, you know, that muslin bag that had the coffee beans in it. 
I just set that down and I don't know if you can really see, yeah. I took a, just a piece of paper from my notebook and I put it down on the texture of that bag and I took the edge of my pencil, the lead part of my pencil, and I just went back and forth, back and forth and see how it picked up the texture of that. So you can definitely do textural things. You know, I'm gonna use some paint with this. This is that kind of mesh that fruit comes in as a bag of tangerines. But, you know, I just cut part of it. It's kind of hard to cut and it falls apart. But this is a great kind of fishnet texture, right? With a net. And then this kind of small bubble wrap. If you've got an envelope, you know, you might not even have to use paint for this. You could actually glue something like this on, you know, just glue it onto your art. But you know how those padded envelopes, you can separate it. I never realized you can do this. But the bubbly, you want the part where the bubbles are, you know, where the texture is. So this side here is kind of smoother and I wanted the bubbly part, but you can separate it and look how easy this is. You can just peel it completely away. I never knew you could do this. This is the inside of a padded envelope, like when you mail something that you don't want to get ruined. So see how that works? Part of the paper is still on there, but see how, and this is the side now, you know, where you feel it, that has more texture. This side is more flat and smooth. But when I print, I like to use the textured side. And actually, I'm going to show you that maybe right now. And Larry, we have another question. Someone wants to know if they can use watercolors. You can. I, um, it depends. I mean, if you're using watercolor on the brown paper, it might not show up very well because it's a more delicate medium. You know, acrylic paint and poster paint is more immediate and thicker. But if you if you want to try watercolor, that's like I'm doing things that, I, you know, tempera paint wasn't on the list and I use tempera paint instead of acrylic and it works fine. So explore, don't be afraid to try anything that seems interesting to you. To me, it's fair game. Just don't do anything that's dangerous. Okay, so I did some of that. And speaking of dangerous, I you know, use a mat knife sometimes to cut. And if you are a, a child, please don't use one of these. Have a grown up help you because this is can be very dangerous. But yeah, I can kind of cut in with it. That's for grown ups. Promise me, if you're a kid, do not use one of these knives. You can cut yourself really bad. But, you know, the blade slips in and out, and I kind of did something in the middle so I can kind of pull it away. And really, this, this particular piece of cardboard doesn't peel away very much. But see, I'm just starting to get a little bit of texture. I started off with a flat piece and already look at my composition. I've got an element over here. I got something here. I get some texture here. Get some texture here. So, like I say, I want to do some paint stuff just to do it quickly at the beginning, just in case it, it um, doesn't dry very fast. So I'm taking some water. I don't know if you can see that far. Where am I? Grab this paint. You don't just see black and white right now. See green and blue too, though. I'm going to get here. Yeah, you can see my colors now. Move my phone out of the way before I mess up my phone. Putting a little bit of water. I have a cup of water. A big brush. Be careful because this is not the kind of brush you usually use with this paint. But maybe I'm going to add a little bit of blue, some white, just maybe a little bit of green. Yeah, I'm kind of mixing it up and I'm painting. It ends up looking almost like fish, like the side of a tropical fish. See how I painted color on the bubbly side? And I'm just going to turn that over and print it right onto my new piece of art. I could have done it on a piece of paper, but this is so cool. So this is the first print. Now I'm going to do a ghost print. A ghost print is ghost called a ghost because you do it twice and it gets more faint. You see, you can see the bubbles, but that was a little bit too much paint. So now I'm going to take maybe this totally different colored piece of construction paper. I got this construction paper at a Rite Aid, I think, just at a drugstore. But see how it's kind of got texture in it already. So I'm going to do. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to do another print called the ghost print. I'm going to print it again. See what the green and the blue and the white looks like on the pink paper. Do one more time. You just end up getting all sorts of cool, interesting things. I can go, I don't know how close the focus will go. See, that's getting out of focus. But the one that I did the other day, I was showing you, look really careful at some of those dots. Look inside, I just, I was totally tripping on this. 
see that each dot is a little bit different from each other and they've got kind of weird little shapes. They look like little emojis almost, like little weird people or robot. You know, we had the robot story, which was so great today. I'm looking right here and that one where at the tip of my fingerprint, finger looks like a little robot to me. So, you know, this is so much fun. And then this was the, the that, see that texture there and this texture here, that was from painting using that the mesh stuff that the fruit is wrapped in. So maybe I'll try doing something with that too. So I've got this red mess. Maybe I'll try painting something right through it. See what happens. Go into the different color. Um, knew I would make a mess. I think I'm going to call it. But I'm going to paint right on there. And see, that doesn't work very well. I lift it up. See, it didn't really do much. But if I get the whole thing, so I'm, you know, pretend this is just an extra piece of paper. It's not going to be your art. But if we paint the whole thing, maybe I'll add a different little bit of yellow. Keep it kind of different. But see, I'm painting over the surface of that. And then I'll take another piece of paper that maybe I will end up using on my art. I'm going to take this. Again, this is like a green. You see, it's got green and blue. Almost like that. It looks like the texture of a watermelon, but it's just a piece of cheap construction paper that I got at the drugstore. So I'm taking that off and I'm putting it here. And then I don't want to get my hands dirty, but the painty side is right there now. And I'm going to take just another piece of paper, press over it. Now I'm using the pressure of my hand. And because that net, netting stuff, and this dries pretty quick because it's a ghost print. See? And I could even do it again. Let's see if, yeah, that, oh, look how cool that looks. I take it out like that. But if I do, this is a ghost print, what I'm about to do now. See, see. Take the edge of this one. This is like, this I did a few days ago with the same mess, but now I have a different color. So I'm gonna do a little bit of there. The fun part about making any kind of art, but especially abstract or textural art, is you don't have to really worry, oh, did I get the nose right? Oh, are the eyes crooked? You know, I'm not drawing a person. I'm focusing on just having fun with the art material. Look at that. Texture, texture. It almost looks like that wire on a certain kind of gate or fence, you know, around people's yards. See a lot of that here. So I'm going to put this in a little tip. Yeah. So now see, I've got these two things that maybe I can cut or tear parts of them and glue it down to my art. And then another thing I wanted to share, and then I'll quit with the paint and maybe we'll do some stuff with oil paint. Now. If you don't have any paint, you could be experimenting even right now. Let me show you what I was talking about earlier with oil pastel. So if you have an oil pastel and you have a piece of one, like see this one is already broken. So I'm going to peel the paper off. So dirty, the paper was already off. <laughs> I thought that was paper, it's just dirty. Okay, so I'm going to clean it up by just rubbing back and forth. See that clean? Can't really see, but now there's a clean edge to the side of that. And look, if I do that, I'm going to try to hold it closer so you can see. But I'm going to see this part here. I'm going to take the red and I'm just running on the top. So see how that turned it red just on the where it's highest, where the high points are. And I could take another, here's a white. Again, it's dirty, so I'm going to clean it off. And then look, I can make it lighter. Yeah, it kind of turns pink down at the bottom. But it's only hitting those top parts. It's not getting down deep into the groove. You can experiment with that. I'll show you another cool thing. Maybe some of you already know this little trick. But basically, I'm just kind of going over some fun things that I've picked up over time that are interesting ways to create texture. I'm going to take a little piece of the construction paper, and I'm going to color maybe a dark color. So I'm going to color. Some light blue, maybe I'll mix it with some green. Mix it with a little bit of black, so it's a little bit darker. The thing that's great about oil pastels, which if you're used to using them, you already know, they blend together. So I'm, you know, using, I'm pressing pretty hard and I'm creating some oil pastel stuff here. Green light here, I'll make I'll start so it's light on the left and then medium and dark on the far edge. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that and I'm going to turn it upside down right onto the cardboard of my art and I'm going to draw something with a pencil. And maybe I'll use the edge of a marker, but I'm applying pressure. I'm just like, you'll see what I mean. I'm pressing, I'm pressing, I'm pressing. And what's going to happen is it's going to transfer the oil pastel onto the cardboard. You see that? Kind of light on the camera, but that was from turning it over and just kind of doing that. Another cool thing you can do is you can, if you, again, if you have temper paint, it's easy because it's easy to clean up. But if you do something similar, similar to what I just showed you with the oil pastel, but I'm going to use paint this time. Maybe I'll have a little bit of this red color here. The other thing that makes me nervous, but it, I'm excited by, I have no idea what my art's gonna look like at the end. I hope I don't embarrass myself and end up with a crazy piece of art that no one likes, but that's the fun part about doing art. So see, I just painted some paint on here, but again, you can just turn this, maybe I won't do it. Well, I am gonna do it directly on here because that thing I just showed you with the oil pastel, that didn't turn out very strong. So I'm gonna do the same thing, except for instead of oil pastel, I'm using paint, I'm turning it upside down and then, I'm just, I'll use a pencil so you can see. So I'm just pressing with a pencil. And the texture of the cardboard is kind of making it. I'm making a shape like that. I got this idea for this shape because I was unbraiding some of that thread that I was telling you about. See, this is that, my other art piece that I did. Remember it had that braided yarn? So I was unbraiding it and it kind of ended up like that. That's kind of what I just kind of thought about when I was doing this. So I'm gonna peel this up. Look, look how cool this is. Up to the the side of the paper, it looks like a spider almost. But see, it took it pulled the paint off where I applied on the other side where I applied with the pencil. And then see it printed on the art. Can everyone see that there? So you know, this is because we're working on kind of a color. This brown we already started with the color on the brown paper. It's maybe harder if you use oil pastels to get a strong color. But you can do, show you again something, maybe, maybe. Square of white oil pastel. And you can take the edge of a penny, a dime, or you know, just anything that has an edge, and I'm gonna scratch through it. So I'm gonna do, See, I did kind of concentric circles. You see where I did the circles? So you can remove, you know, I'm, I'm scratching away the oil pastel. You know, I added oil pastel, but then I'm reducing it. I'm taking away. Another thing I'm thinking about, which I wanted to try today, is to take just a piece of thin newspaper and wad it up so it's all wrinkly. I just took a little scrap of regular newspaper and I'm gonna try painting and see my art. This is why sometimes I like to work on different pieces of paper and then glue it on later because I run out of room. So here I've got this piece of construction paper. And I think maybe I'll just paint some white paint onto this and now my brush is kind of dirty, but already crumpled up and I'm just painting some white turning kind of yellowish green because I had some other paint on it but now I'm print you know this is kind of crinkled almost like I made a paper flower and I'm going to stamp it on the paper see that actually makes this is reminding me of that the Aaron Siskine photograph that you know look kind of like the footprints on the stone on the on the someone said it looked like a waterfall without water but see, that's kind of creating a texture. Well, what if I did it the other way? If I painted, try this. And I'm going to put the crumpled up paper 
they pull it up. Yeah, see, that's really kind of nice. Hard to see. So I'm going to show it really close. You can see how it kind of made some interesting textures. And if you fold it, this is going back to what I was doing with the pencil. I'm going to fold through the middle of that and transfer some of it. Just making a line. I'm thinking about that yarn, the string. So the line that kind of scoops around. And when I open it, see how it pulled up? The pressure of the pencil made the line. So, I, you know, we're going to run out of time soon, but I do want to just, you know, put together something because basically, other than making a mess, I created a lot of interesting things that I could maybe use on my art for texture. And like I was saying earlier, if you found interesting things, maybe you didn't create texture with the bubble wrap because you weren't using paint. But if you got a little bubble wrap, you could, you know, glue it onto your art. So I'm going to put this back here. This is my art. And now I'm going to make some creative choices about composition. Yeah, I've created some texture. Some of this stuff I like, but it doesn't really hold together to me as a whole art piece. So maybe what I'm going to do is look at other things. Like I really do like this. I didn't even think this side was going to turn out cool, but I really like the way that turned out. And it's still wet, but I'm going to. I want kind of a torn edge, I think. It'll be a softer edge. I'm just going to kind of tear that out. And this is a big, strong shape. Get my fingers all over it. I don't want to mess up with the drawing. Hold it up close so you can see. So, see, that was just made by when I was pressing it, it said with the bright orange paper. Sorry, my camera really isn't showing the colors very well in this light. But it was a bright orangish red construction paper. And when I painted on the other side and then pressed from this side onto the cardboard, I actually ended up with this on my cardboard, where I'm showing you right now. But I like this better. So this is already dry. Now I get to use my glue. So I don't want to mess this up too much. I'm going to. Put a little paper towel down so it hopefully it won't transfer. But I'm going to turn this over. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the edges. I like to get the glue open just so that it lets out a little bit. But this is my trick. I always tell kids don't overuse glue. Some of them use it like they're going to have a milkshake. But see where I put the glue? But you don't need glue everywhere, mostly on the edges. See, only a little bit of paint came out. This is pretty dry now. I'm going to glue that over. Again, I don't want to really touch it with my hands, so I'm going to gently press a paper towel. Hopefully, all of you are kind of working along with me, doing your own thing. Because I'm a chatterbox, I'll just keep talking. But hopefully, you guys are doing some stuff, you peeps. So I definitely need to make some more decisions because. Doesn't look like a finished art piece, but it doesn't matter. You know, that definitely your goal does not mean need to be finishing your art. But I remember I told you that this was that school of the braided thread. Isn't this beautiful? Someone gave this to me years ago. So I was glad I found it. Add to my art. So see, here's a piece of that. I could glue that. You know, kind of this I kind of this is interesting because again, it looks similar. This tassel and this thing kind of let remind me of each other. I'm going to glue that. Okay. I'm going to put the glue down where I want. We really are running out of time. So I'm going to turn it back over just a couple of minutes for a host. Final comments that we need to make. But see, I'm just going to keep adding some cool stuff. This is that um, uh, the construction paper that already has kind of weird color that runs through it. It is kind of curled up. One of the photos I looked at by that artist that I showed you earlier, Aaron Siskin, it's this guy. He, he took um, a beautiful black and white photograph of, of paint that was chipping and peeling from the sun. So that made a really, you know, it was all the paint was kind of peeling off almost like that. So maybe I'll add that as a dimensional textual thing right there. A 
lots of spring or early summer, which is where we're heading, right? This could be evoking a, a blade of brass. See how that, see how that adds three dimensions? So I wasn't even thinking about this, but now I'm sort of creating almost like a flower and a leaf or a branch. And that's just two minutes ago. I wasn't even thinking about that. Anyone else who's Should use a little bit. How many more minutes do we have? When should I close this out, Erica? Or Susie, when, how many more minutes should we? Work on um, about five more minutes. Okay, we're good. Five minutes. Mm -hmm. So now look, I'm actually using the actual bubble wrap. I'm cutting it. So thinking of plants and leaves and cutting it into kind of a leaf shape. Maybe I'll do that. This really is coming out totally. I didn't know how it would turn out, but I wasn't thinking like that. I don't know. This is plastic. I don't know how white, how well white glue can hold on to the plastic, but to find out if this dries, power if it falls off. I know that's not a good combo. Bubble wrap and white glue might seems like it's holding pretty well now. But see, I, the one thing I like to do when I'm making art is I like to squint. You know, squinting is where you almost shut your eyes and then you look at your art and it's kind of all out of focus and fuzzy because your eyes are almost closed. It gives me kind of a fresh look. Holding it up to a mirror does the same thing. If you hold your art up to a mirror, always I get fresh ideas from it. But what I feel like is missing from mine is any real, it's all kind of dark and there's a little bit of light stuff, but it's all kind of medium dark. So I'm taking a, a black oil pastel I'm just going to add some kind of a shape that's dark because I feel like graphically, in terms of shapes and the composition, I feel like I need something darker. I'm really thinking of trying to draw something. Like I told you, the other thing looks like a leaf, kind of a leaf. I'm not thinking about a leaf or anything. I'm just thinking about kind of a shape. I just feel like it needed something dark. This is kind of cool where it's doing that thing where it's only hitting the high spots of the cardboard. Under what would happen if I take the white and go over the black. Just exploring and having fun. I hope you are too. I'm gonna drop an, oh, sorry. Sorry, Lynn. Go ahead. I'm gonna drop an email in the chat. Um, we'd love to see the artwork that you've made, so uh, please send images to to the email that I'm about to share. We'd love That's to see great. what you made. That would be great. So now I have some of that mesh from the fruit. I think I'm going to glue that down here at the bottom. See there? I'm not sure about that. Maybe this is an opportunity. The glue sticks better, so I don't get it all wet. See, it has all the holes in it. I'm just going to. Put a bunch of glue here. See if that will hold them up. I'll deal with it just a little. Sticky, sticky, sticky. But you know how glue sticks work. They'll dry and then it won't be sticky. See, that seems to hold this pretty well. Again, kind of textural. Like, see how the, you know, this kind of, kind of comes away from it. Larry, I just uh, took photographs of your last piece and uh, altered it with my phone. Susie, um, oh, I was able to, yeah, so Susie is going to share, I think, the, the, the last photo so they can see how you can use the phone to manipulate yeah. your image. Oh my gosh, that's great. So the one that I did as a sample that I was showing, yes. that you, you manipulated it using a, a program in your phone? Yes. Well, just yeah. filters. <laughs> that's it. Look at that. Can you see it, Larry? Oh, yeah. Look at that. I'm sticking my head in my Oh, that's so cool. And I you think can I like use, it yeah. All you kind of have to do is change the tints and, and change the saturation, remove the color, um, add color. Uh, it's, it's super easy. Wow. You know what's interesting, Maria? Yeah. On the left, on the, le on the vertical left side, 
See how they got some horizontal things that don't even show up in my art. See how the little horizontal? Oh yeah, I don't know that's what right. I'm talking about. Yes, you see like a little snake thing. Oh no, no, no. Which one are you talking? Or the vertical little snake? The, I mean, I'm sorry, horizontal. On the on the left edge of the whole piece, the left margin yeah. of the piece. See how there's a series, they're very I think it has to do with the corrugated cardboard, maybe, but see how there's lines, horizontal lines that oh, run through right. the vertical shape. Yeah. It's a very That's tall great. vertical shape that goes top to bottom on the far left. But see mm -hmm. how those lines, you don't see them in my art, but somehow with your manipulating with the filters. It created a series of horizontal stripes. Right. Yeah, it looks That's really great. I, I love the I love the photos. I was having so much fun. <laughs> okay. Wow. My art. I might work on it after we after we sign off because I definitely think this is something that's in progress. Whereas that other one that Maria was just showing you, that that ended up falling together pretty easily. Oh, I just found something. Look at this. A little curly cue. Can you see that? I tore the brown paper away and it created kind of like a, I'll fold it against the yellow paper behind it, but it's kind of like a little curly cue. So I'm going to glue that on too. That, that paper that you peel off really is amazing. You can actually use it for your texture composition. Oh, wow. I don't, I mean, I know we have some announcements, I think, or something that we're going to um, end with, but I'm just, um, you know, I'm adding a little bit. Again, I wanted some darker dark, so I'm going in, just adding some dark maybe around my shapes to make the shapes pop out a little bit. This is just the oil pattern. Mixing it with the white, so it's going to kind of turn gray. And it's doing that cool striping thing. Look at this. They're like Prison bars. There's white bars that turn into black bars. See this part I'm circling right here? You just get all sorts of interesting things happen. Yeah, and if you want to type in the chat what you created or what materials you use, we'd love to see that. Thank you. Yeah, if anyone used some interesting art materials that were not discussed by me or the materials list, definitely give us some ideas. We love to share ideas. I just thought right here now. I'm adding a little bit of white glue, which is going to make this a big mess. I'm adding a little bit more mess on that side. Someone used a leaf. Someone else used feathers. Dried beans, crumpled paper, tape, string, crayon rubbing. All oh, good. I hope people will send in pictures of their art so we can take Pom poms. Sponge and beads, glitter. Well, I hope that was fun for people. If you're not finished, keep working on it if you have time. I'm, I'm assuming that some of you are families working together, there's kids working with parents or aunts and uncles, who knows? But so, yeah. I'm going to put my new art back in this little showcase, but that's how this is a little bit better lighting. Let's see how I ended up with some three dimensional things that pop off of it. Put that up there. Like I say, if this was a different platform, we could see everybody's art. But I'm just excited that we made art today and that we learned some new things about texture. Hopefully, if you're a little kid, do you remember what abstract means? I always go over this with kids. To me, the easiest way to think about abstract in art, the opposite of realistic. I wasn't trying to draw a building. I wasn't trying to draw a person. I wasn't trying to draw an elephant. I just was creating sh abstract shapes. So remember, abstract means you're not concerned with it looking like something that you could call by name. So thank you so much. I'm going to hand it back over to Erica. And thank you so much for participating today. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We hope you've enjoyed today's presentation. And of course, a special thank you to our friends at LACMA for leading us in this amazing art workshop. As I mentioned earlier, please be on the lookout for a survey link in your email. You completing the survey will provide us and our partners in the Department of Mental Health valuable feedback and help us plan future programs. Our very last creative storytelling workshop for this year will be on June 18th, which will be exploring art and technology and will feature an art activity and reading of the book Space Spot by Mike Cowie. 
Uh, to register for that event, visit LACountyLibrary.org backslash LACMA program. There you'll also find a book list about the themes presented in each workshop. Um, I also wanted to mention that our spring and summer discovery program has started. I would like to invite you and your family and your friends to participate in our annual celebration of reading, learning, and curiosity for people of all ages going on now through August 8th. Each month's challenge encourages you to log books you've read and complete activities. And every month you complete, you'll have an opportunity to win prizes. You can sign up online at LACountyLibrary.org backslash spring summer discovery or stop by your local library to pick up a game card on activity ideas. Our positive parenting librarian will remain um, in the event for 10 minutes after the program. And if you have any parenting questions you would like to post in the chat, you can also schedule a one on one consultation with a positive parenting librarian and we will post the link to schedule that consultation in the chat as well again. And if you're interested in participating in more of our upcoming virtual programs, please visit us at LACountyLibrary.org. So go ahead, Yeni. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. Thank you, Erica. For now, we'll stay another 10 minutes to answer any questions. And I will also include the link once more to our form to request the consultation in the chat. But I want to uh, thank LACMA for a wonderful program. It was fascinating to learn about Erin Saskin Siskin and learning through storytelling with the use of touch and technology. Storytelling supports students learning by encouraging them to be organized and express their ideas and knowledge. While we wait for any questions or comments, uh, let me talk about chores. This is one of the topics some parents have concerns on. Parents may ask themselves, how do I introduce chores to children? Well, you can start by explaining why it's important for everyone to help around in the house. Also, decide on a list of chores and who will do them. You can explain how all family members will expect to, to help with some household chores and that everyone will have certain jobs. Also, you can draw up a job roster. This will uh, tell who, who, the, who your children um, will do what, what chores. Also, let your child know when their chores must be finished. And also, tell your child exactly what needs to be done for the job to be satisfactory. Also, talk about rewards and consequences if they don't do the chores. But if they do the chores, remember, always reward them. And remind your child once and help them get started if necessary. Also, don't forget to praise and reward your child for completing their chores. And apply consequences if your child does not complete their chores satisfactory. Also, always review the progress after a week. And remember, as a child, as a child learns to do chores, you will not need to remind them of the chores and rewards and consequences each day. And remember that chores should not take so much time that children need in other areas of neglected. Children still need time for play, hobby, sports, and homework. And Yenny, just as you know, to let the, our people, our, our friends know that, sure. you know, it, it is a one-on-one -on -one consultation. So if you want to tell them how, um, you know, how the, the consultation takes place. Sure. Uh, once uh, they see the, the little uh, link, they, you, um, they tells you which days you're available and we'll, we'll work on your schedule. Uh, we'll call you and, um, and um, answer your questions, your your uh, your needs, um, and then from there we'll just call you and and um, start asking your questions. Either um, one of us, if 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 it's not me, it will be another triple P librarian that will help you. But we will always call you. Thank you. And these consultations are available in Spanish as well. Oh yes. Um, yes. So yes, we do. We have English and Spanish. Thank you, Erica. I forgot about that. No problem. Remember that we, we are here to help you. Um, if you have any concerns, um, any comments, we're always here. Uh, we're here to listen to you and to give you any tips. And so we want to thank everyone for participating. Some of you might still be working on your art project and that's fine. Continue working on that. And then don't forget to visit our website and use our link if you do want to schedule a one on one consultation. Thank you everyone so much and have a good rest of your evening and a great weekend. Take care. Bye for now.